Welcome to another procedural material tutorial in Blender. Today we are making this beautiful titanium you see on the screen right now. It has imperfections, imperfection scales and sliders that you can all change individually and make your own. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into making this. So to start off, you're just wanting you want to get whatever model you're applying this texture to right here and put it in your viewport. I just have a camera pointing at it. You might have an actual model, it doesn't matter. All you just need is this. Then you're going to go over here to your rendered preview and then you're going to uncheck scene world. And then I'm going to be using this built in forest HDR here and it's flipped 180 degrees and I put the strength at a one. You can, I'm going to flip the rotation back to zero degrees so that we get some sort of neutral lighting here. Nice. So then we head over here to the shading workspace. Just make sure that you have your viewport here and then set it up with your same render uh, lighting settings right here. I just go to my camera view. You can also just pan around in the viewport and focus on your object. Then with your sphere selected or whatever model you're using, press new. I'm going to call this titanium. Like so. Then you want to make sure you enable the node wrangler add on. So go to edit preferences, go to add ons and type in node wrangler and you'll see it right here and just hit the checkbox. It'll give you some shortcuts that you can use in here. So then we're going to press shift a search up a Voronoi texture. Then we're going to press Control T with the Voronoi texture selected, which will give us this texture coordinate and mapping node. Then we're going to want to move our object into our mapping. This will just map the texture around the object versus around the world space. So if we Control Shift and left click this Voronoi texture like I just did, we can sort of see the pattern going on here. So we're going to want to switch this to Smooth F1 and then the scale on this to 125, like this. This is going to make some super tiny dots and this is going to end up factoring into our bump but we want these to be sort of uh, stretched along an axis and so we're going to take the x and the y here and put those down to a 0 0.2 so we can sort of get this stretched effect going on here so something else you can do is when you're mapping this onto an object that's maybe not a sphere you're only really going to stretch this along one axis so it'll look more something like 1 1 and 0 0.2 but because we're on a sphere we just take the X and Y at point two, or we could even take the Y and Z at a point two and stretch it in that way like this. But yeah, essentially you just, when you're on a cube or something, you're just gonna stretch it along one axis. Anyways, keep moving on. We're gonna factor this into some bump now. So I'll press shift day and search for a bump node like this. Then we're gonna take our distance into the height here. And if we control shift and left click this, we can see that it's way too strong and it's not exactly giving us the effect we want. There's too much contrast going on. We want it to be a little more similar because we don't want the bump to be too much. Because if we go ahead and plug this into the shader, we can see that that's kind of ugly and it's not the titanium look we're going for. So then we're gonna press shift A and search for a map range node like this. Ooh, not, not a UV map. Give me a map range. There we go. And put that in between the two and I'll control shift and left click this map range. And we're going to want to switch the values on this guy. We're going to switch this from minimum, which is basically, if you had a color ramp, this from minimum and from maximum are the sort of the positions of the stops on the color ramp. And it's giving us a larger range, essentially, that we can go from. And then this down here, we're going to switch this to min to a 0 0.05. So the from min is a negative 2, from max is a positive 2. And then to min is a 0 0.05 and then to max is 0 0.1. Now when we look at this, we can see there's a lot less contrast going on here because values are all between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. So if we control shift and left click our shader again, we can see that it is a much better effect. However, it is a little bit strong, so we're gonna move the strength all the way down to a 0 0.1. And then it gives us a lot more of a subtle effect. Obviously you can play with the strength however you like, but I'll be using a 0 0.1 for now. The next step is we're going to be adding in some roughness. And to do that, we'll hit Shift A and add a Musgrave texture, like so. We're going to take the vector from the mapping into the vector of the Musgrave texture. And on this Musgrave texture, I'll Control Shift and left click so we can preview it. I'm going to switch the scale to a 10, just to give us some nice scale. This is, this is going to be the sort of uh, surface imperfections you saw in the, in the thumbnail. It's going to be adding some extra roughness in spots and then where the actual metal is it's going to be pretty smoother then the dimension we're going to put at 0 
down here, and the detail we'll put at an eight. So we get this effect. Obviously, this is too many surface imperfections going on if we use the white for it or the black. So we're gonna press Shift A and add another map range node here. Then this from minimum, we're going to switch to a 0 0.5. So we get some really close values here. And then the from max, we'll leave it a one. The two minimum, we'll leave it a zero, but the maximum we'll put at a 0.25. Or actually, we'll leave this at a one, and then we'll give us some more controls in a minute. So map range result is we just switched one value, which is from minimum to a 0 0.5 to give us some contrast so there's not as much blurring effect. So in this next step, I'm going to hit Shift A and add another math node. Right here, this one's going to be set to add. And then I'm going to plug the result from the map range into the top value here. Then we can Control Shift and left click this add node. We can see that essentially it is literally just adding to what we already have. So we're actually going to move this to a negative number. I'm going to put it in a negative 0.05 real quick. See what that does. So what this is doing right now is it's controlling the effect of our um, uh, imperfections here. So if we hold shift and move this even lower, we'll see that the imperfections have less effect. And then we move it up and they have more effect. And eventually we can go, if we go past zero, we start affecting the whole thing like that. So I'm gonna leave this somewhere around, very, very subtle. Leave it around a negative 0.9. Just for now, we can obviously switch this later. But yeah, we'll leave it there for now. Then we're gonna have our base roughness because we don't want the titanium to be perfectly smooth or be perfectly uh, unrough, I guess you could say. So we're gonna hit Shift A and add another math node right here. Plug the result of this one into the value here. So now if we control Shift and left click this guy, we can see that it's adding 0 0.5 to the whole thing over here. And what we wanna do is we can see that this is still black and it's black here, but it shouldn't be. So we need to make sure we go ahead and check clamp on this node right here. And then if we control shift and left click this guy, we can see this. And then we need to check clamp on this guy and control shift and left click this guy to see what's going on. And what this is doing is the clamp makes all the values stay between zero and one. So it's not gonna give you anything that's darker than black or anything brighter than white. And that's just something to keep in mind, but yeah. Obviously, if we put it at 0.25, this is what the reference is looking like. We can still see the imperfections that are showing up better. And so, yeah, this is going to be our roughness value tweak. So then we can move the value into our roughness, control shift and left click our shader. And we can't really tell what's going on with it because we have a pure white right now. So we're going to take our metallic first and move it up to a one. Now we can sort of see some more imperfections going on here. I think it might be a little bit too rough overall. So we're gonna move this 0.25. We can obviously always change this really easily to like a 0.1. And then we'll move this value here to a negative 0.75. So that we can start to see the imperfections a little bit better. Then for the color, we're gonna change this to an actual titanium hex value. And that is going to be an 878681. Again, that is an 878681, which is a titanium color. Awesome. So now that we have all our colors, I'm gonna to go to our camera view again, and we can mess with our surface imperfections however we want. I'm going to increase them a little bit. So let's move this to like a negative 0.5, see if that helps. Yep, we can sort of see them coming through here and here and here. Let's make it even more exaggerated. I'm gonna move it all the way to a negative 0.25. Yeah, so now we get the surface, the surface imperfections showing up quite a bit. And I'm gonna increase the overall roughness, so I'll move this to like a 0.2. So which means everywhere it's a 0.2, then where the surface imperfections are, it's a 0.45 on the roughness. Essentially is what's going on here. So now we can see the surface imperfections really nicely. It might be a little bit too much, so I'll move this to like a negative 0.4. And now they're a little bit more subtle. Yeah, but anyway, that is the finished uh, material. Obviously you can play with the roughness on both values as you want. Maybe you can scale this down a little bit if you want it to be like a 75. You don't want there to be as much bump going on. Or you want it to be more, you can always move it up to like a 200. That'll make all the grains a little bit smaller. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at a 125 for the base value, and you can switch it to whatever you like in the future. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and can use this titanium in your renders and have it look really clean. So I will see y'all guys in the next one.